what is your biggest miss goo <laughs> no so yeah with what with what mckenna was just saying um exploring some of the new quote-unquote areas like the depths in the sky mm -hmm. uh while they all they both served a specific purpose that was that was like fun to me like i enjoyed the puzzles up in the sky i i, I enjoyed the especially the lead-ups to the dungeon um like the water temple and the the wind temple or whatever um and then in the depths doing some of the the yiga quests was fun i felt mm -hmm. like the greater aspect of it like as as like oh this is like a new area to check out it 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 wasn't totally there like it, it wasn't as compelling to me as just like i stayed mostly on the main most of the game for me was like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. like what's what's uh, the previous world like the, mm -hmm. from the last game? Like, how is it different? And exploring like the caves and stuff were fun. But um, I mean, I probably spent a lot of time still in the depths in the sky. I got all the like I did enjoy the quests that were particular to it. So I can't say it was like I guess calling it a miss would be an over exaggeration. But I think it it didn't quite like. It didn't quite, um, I don't know, like when I first understood the concept of both the sky and underground, like it didn't sort of live up to like its full potential for me. Like after mm -hmm. a while, the idea of going down to the depths, I was like, what, I'm, I'm just going to find like the the boomerang from Wind Waker, which is cool on some level, but it was like it's not really worth it to me. Like, I sure. I didn't feel compelled to go get all the light routes and stuff like that. So that was that was sort of a miss for me. Yeah, the yeah, completionist side of me like forced me to do it. I for did sure. love the depths. I thought they yeah. were very cool, very like Nausicaa cool vibes. But yeah, I did get a little tired of them. <laughs> that's a right. that's actually exactly the same. That's my same miss. It's the same, just oh, the okay. new areas. <laughs> and it's just specifically oh. like. The feeling of, because like you said, Goo, there's there's cool stuff in them and there's cool stuff to do, especially in the sky. I love the individual puzzles. It seemed mm -hmm. like those little puzzle islands and the little like Death Star looking things had some some of the most memorable puzzles for me. And there's like yeah. the 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 big construct forge island or whatever. There's cool stuff up there, but the idea of hearing at the beginning of this game. You have an entire sky to explore that's the size of the overworld, and you have an entire depths area to explore that's the size of the overworld. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, what could be there? There could be like cool new civilizations and crazy yeah. stuff. And it's, it just doesn't, they just don't really deliver on that front. Especially, particularly for me, was the depths, like you said, because I, after a while it's like all right there's yiga clan hideouts there's enemy outposts there's some of those underground coliseums there's bosses there's a lot of throwing bright blooms around and avoiding yeah. gloom and it's fun but it it's does at get... very atmospheric and it's cool yeah. but it, i feel like it more serves like a gameplay purpose a lot of times i would go down there when i was low on zonite and i just needed to mine a bunch of zonite <laughs> yeah i found when i did need to like after a while when I did need to like get certain light routes or like needed to get somewhere down there, I found this fun, but it was in a different way compared to on, on the surface, I would just be happy to explore my way there and kind of see what's along the path. Uh, eventually yeah. in the depths, I was just like, I'm going to build a flying machine and just fly over to that. That's thing what if I, I can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. Same. I would just like, see how, what, small glowing light route is in the distance and be like, all right, I'm just going to hover bike all the way over there. And then, then light everything up and s look on the map and see if there are any points of interest. If not, I'm moving <laughs> up. You know? yeah, we gotta, we gotta get through here. <laughs> yeah. I think the, well, the sky was more of a miss than the depths for me. I think, cause I had more expectations for the sky, whereas the yeah. depths I didn't even, yeah. th those are just a totally, we didn't even know they existed <laughs> thing. Um, just comparing like the great sky island to the great plateau like the great plateau is a little breath of the wild in miniature it's an example of what you're uh -huh. going to get through the rest of the game mm -hmm. but the great sky island is just 
kind of its own thing that you don't see you don't really see anything else like it yeah and uh I, I wanted to see more great sky island kind of stuff yeah i, d- I did expect yeah. to be like going up there and like talking to more like constructs and like I yeah, I was a little surprised. <laughs> I was surprised, like kind of Corey, that you mentioned the lack of civilization, because I, I did genuinely think that when we went into the depths, we would meet like a new species of people that live underground. And it's like they have those weird statues that it's like, what are those? Yeah, we don't even know what those people are. It's like they're like mole magma type people. And it's like, why did we not see those? Like, come on, we had a but chance. Anytime. Anytime I know there's a new area, like a, a, an entire new area in a Zelda game, that's one of the first things my mind thinks of is like, who's who going to live here? Is there? Yeah, who's yeah, going to be there? That's what Zelda does. Like, you, have a, you have a whole sky, you have a whole depth, and it's like, well, no one really lives there. Yeah. And I think that's like, not just Tears of the Kingdom, but it's also a Breath of the Wild thing. Like, I'm ready to move on to a game where like it's not post-apocalyptic and like people are living there and yes, there's a bunch of towns and stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm done with post-apocalyptic Zelda. Give us something cute like Wind Waker again, please. Which is technically post-apocalyptic. <laughs> Which is also like, kind of post-apocalyptic. <laughs> but like, there's at least I civilization. Think, <laughs> yeah, I think Tears of the Kingdom was actually like that though. Like, it was better. All the places. Yeah, yeah. I, that's like I part of what I liked about it. I think it's cool to have like the lar- like large swaths of land that are just that's just like the wild area, <laughs> the wild land, you know, like, yeah. mm-hmm. you, you know, that's the countryside or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely like agree. Another thing, too, that like when when you go in Lookout Landing, when you go underneath and you get the map of like all the settlements and stuff, I'm just like ready. I'm like, what new towns are going to pop up? And it goes over like the same eight towns in Breath of the Wild. But also now there's Lookout Landing. And I was just kind of like, oh, oh, man. Yeah. Well, at least I get to see what's going on there. It's nothing super special. Hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think it all I don't know. It all checked out to me. Nothing seemed suspicious on the surface at least like it especially because like the the areas felt changed to me like i know yeah. maybe no, it's definitely who, still i know people have like poured over the game for the last breath of the wild for the last six years or whatever and they were like oh yeah like it felt like the same world but for me like starting from the center and exploring out from there like in an area that I didn't spend as much time in breath of the wild. Like it kind of recontextualized a lot of the areas mm-hmm. and like, yeah, like the, the places awesome. being changed. So that felt, I still felt like it was a new discovery, like going out and exploring, you know, but yeah. yeah. I mean, you get like a couple base camps and stuff like that. Yeah. But... Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Get like the roaming parties that are bringing yeah. peace to the area. That's cool. That's nice. Um, McKenna, what was your what was your big miss? Um, I think I'm gonna go with uh, dungeons that uh, I I liked so a lot of the dungeons. I liked all the dungeons, but I was hoping for some some more stuff like Hyrule Castle, Breath of the Wild, in this game. Okay, yeah, more, more like open yeah. open um. I mean, these were open, but um, less of uh, like, you know, go activate this to, uh, mm. you know, open up some other area. Just more, just more Hyrule Castle exploring, uh, finding cool stuff, uh, not necessarily having to go through everywhere if you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. These I were... Like it- Oh, go ahead. I was, I, I was just saying, thinking like some of the areas like leading up to quests or like where they they'd have you like maybe exploring like caves and stuff like that. Yeah. Sometimes felt Ancient like that Zora waterworks, the Zora waterworks, which yeah. it, in itself could have been a little bit better that like they did approach that. And it is it's actually like since there are almost examples of it in the game, that does make it a little bit more like disappointing like like they it feels like they have everything they need there to have that sort of thing in I the think game actually yeah. the, the closest thing to that was um 
when you go from lookout landing uh, behind, you know, oh, they, yeah. that shelter area that you go through and explore, mm. like basically Hyrule Castle. That is that that's was like super the closest cool thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, Nico, you didn't say your miss, did you? No, but I, I, I do want to piggyback off this one oh, more thing of where course. I feel like um, kind of what McKenna said, the dungeons in this game are sort of a combination of Breath of the Wilds, Hyrule Castle and Divine Beasts, because you still have to like activate the, the little terminals in a way to get the way to the final boss. Um, but they do feel more. I mean, they're open. They're they're not separate like the Divine Beasts were, um, which True. I think made some people very happy because it felt more cohesive with the world. But also, I I do sort of like the idea of a more traditional Zelda dungeon in an open world game. I don't hate the idea of it completely taking you out of the overworld and like making you do a dungeon. So I'm I'm very split on that cuz it's like I do love Hyrule Castle where you can just go and explore and you jump in find the like the dungeon and like go through there and get the prison cells and you find the Stalnox like that's that was wild in Breath of the Wild for the first time when I got to do that. But I also like the idea of more traditional puzzles and not just activating terminals, you know. So I don't I don't know there. I, I feel like open world Zeldas will never have a perfect Zelda dungeon because of it being open like that just mm -hmm. kind of breaks the rules of what a traditional Zelda dungeon is. Um, mm -hmm. So there's kind of like no way around that. But you know what? They did a great job for what like for the situation they were given, because I do genuinely like every single dungeon <laughs> in this game. Like I, I find all of them so much fun. I would say the closest thing to Hyrule Castle is Thunderhead Isles in um, Tears of the Kingdom. Cause I mean, you, you have to like clear the storm. You don't have to clear. I, I didn't clear the storm, but you can, <laughs> you, you can clear the storm. And then like, they want you to start at the tail and make your way through, find a couple of shrines, make your way to the head and then you start that quest, which it like goes down to a dungeon that is four separate puzzles. I think that is the closest thing to like classic Zelda dungeon puzzles that we got in this game. Um, even though it's very open, it's very abstract. It's not like you've entered this spirit dungeon. Like that's not how it, it worked. But I thought that was mm -hmm. the closest we got puzzle wise to that like classic like ocarina of time zelda feeling um sorry i, I just wanted to I put that out there that. <laughs> if that makes sense yeah it's a little abstract um, though yeah i think um the other times they kind of approach it were and i think i think it's the path forward for mm -hmm. the this style of games dungeons is one where um like it's still open or whatever but you have to and this is a classic Zelda thing, but where you have to kind of like get the overall like like aspects of the dungeon interacting with other parts of it. So like in the the lightning temple, like mm -hmm. moving the mirrors to get the light from yes. one room to another, like doing same things brain. like that. Same brain. Same brain. Good. We're in the same dungeon brain. Exa yeah. yeah, exactly the same. Thing. As well thinking. as, I mean, and still, uh, you can cheese certain things in that dungeon, but you still have to get the light shining on the thing, yeah. you know? And so, like, just giving you an objective and also a partner who can't progress without mm -hmm. certain things being yes. done can enforce those, like, kind of limitations on yeah, you. Yeah, kind of, like, make... force the rules. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, force the rules. Same thing with the mine carts in the Fire Temple, where... You can mm -hmm. cheese a lot of that, but um, it's beneficial to actually learn mm -hmm. how the dungeon works and solving the dungeon as a puzzle. So I think I think there's yeah. room to grow from that. Definitely. that and then, I, yeah, um, the like very specific puzzles, oh, like like you mentioned, like in the construct factory are like good types of puzzles to have in. Yeah, in dungeons. I think those were and like those... some of the most clever in the game. Oh yeah, and I mean those lent themselves specifically to the mechanics of this game, 
being building and like weird contraptions oh, yeah. that you would probably not have thought of on your own um and like unique items that you're building with which was very cool but um that's what made it feel like a dungeon to me is that it was oh this is a unique thing that we only see in this one part of the game you know? yeah yeah that's what i was, I think it comes down to the mechanics of the, of the game because like just this game in breath of the wild you can just do things in so many different ways that it doesn't yeah. feel like you're solving a puzzle because there are so many ways even even just a thing of like get from point a to point b whereas if you're in ocarina of time it's like i need to get to that switch on the other side of the room but the mechanics don't allow me to do that freely so i need to use an item or activate mm -hmm. a thing to get over there whereas in this it's like i'll just build a hover bike or I'll just build yeah. a bridge with a bunch of logs, or I'll just do whatever. So it they seems... need to. I think the the best approaches were the lightning temple and the fire temple, but it's just they need to find a way to like force some yeah. solution. Some because that's that's the thing where it makes people feel like, oh, mm -hmm. this is how you're supposed to do it, and I figured it out, and it, that's what makes people feel smart, you know? Yeah. Uh, the tears of the kingdom specifically feels way more like problem solving than puzzle solving yeah like you're presented with a problem that, how are you gonna fix mm, it instead of like that. here's a puzzle yeah. piece yeah. you gotta find the other puzzle piece that matches with it you know yeah exactly there's exactly. not one answer to almost any puzzle in this game <laughs> like mm. you could just go into the storm cloud and activate the quest and do your thing or you could Even do everything like properly who knows? Even something like the the mirrors and the light in the mm -hmm. lightning temple. Nico, you were talking about one of the specific puzzles where it's like there's a rotating thing and yeah. you need to you need to like stop it to get the light through and it's like you did it in a completely different way, yeah. but it's like you're still solving the same like puzzle that you have to do but doing it in a different way. Yeah, with the mechanics that I was given, you know, yeah. it's just a different way of solving the problem. Um, yeah, I think yeah. there's a good balance they could find like with that while still yeah. maintaining some freedom. I think there's still yeah, I think we're still we have, you know, still to see more evolution of this it's style. Well, I mean, sure. these are very Next experimental games. games. I mean, just yeah, Breath of the yeah. Wild alone was just like, what are you guys doing? And you take Tears of the Kingdom and you're like, OK, what are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's just going to be, I'm sure more of that but they've they're gonna learn lessons with each one that they're making so um i didn't say my biggest miss <laughs> yeah but um i because i really wanted to piggyback off what mckenna said because i really liked it um however my biggest miss goes along with my biggest hit as well um i i do love the story of this game so much and it makes me so angry that it is so easy to spoil it and ruin it for yourself um by viewing the memories in the wrong order or finding things um before like a big reveal because those big reveal moments are so good and i know we talked about recently um even if you were spoiled on certain aspects of the game the the story beats still hit in such a way that it was still emotional it was still impactful but i i just really hate that there's not a specific order you have to get the memories in you know, it could could have been as simple as, you know, you find a memory and it plays the first one. You find another, it plays the second one. You know, like, I personally think you should be handed the story for this story specifically because this story is very linear and it can spoil itself so quickly um, that you would have had to kind of discover it in order. Um, I mean, the, what, Sonya's death... Mm -hmm zelda's draconification um the big attack uh, i mean like you, these are things that should happen in order <laughs> i really wish this story could just be told in order um whereas with breath of the wild story it it just kind of like everything was kind of on its own and you could put it together and you're like wow that's a cool story this one was very linear and i i wish it had forced you <laughs> to experience that way which i think maybe most people might not agree i don't know i just was sad when i saw people kind of get spoiled i don't want to say it's spoiled because you're playing the game but yeah you know like spoiled on the story the game spoiled me yeah, yeah like <laughs> that's silly to say but 
I just I I don't know. I think the storytelling wasn't the best, even though my favorite part of the game is the story. So mm. I I I just wish it could hit the right way for everybody. <laughs> you know. I was actually thinking about this a lot lately, and I think coming from someone who their first memory, which like I think that's also a misnomer because they're not. They're like Zelda's memories. That's mm-hmm. one of the main differences between this and Breath of the Wild. You're not yeah. re-experiencing your memories. You're learning about snippets of yeah, a story you're watching that happened in the her past memories. that you weren't a part of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Coming from someone who got the first one to initiate the quest, and then the next one was <laughs> was Ganondorf getting the Sacred Stone and becoming Demon King Ganondorf. Yep, that was my I was like, I think one of the coolest things about that about being able to find them in different orders i think that actually supports the whole narrative plot device of this game because it's all about piecing together the mystery of where zelda and it's like you're picking up different clues and stuff and you don't always find them in order you don't always get a nice neat oh, linear sure. this happened then this happened then this happened and that's why i like that you get each piece of the puzzle, which are individual, really cool story moments, and then you have to piece together what the narrative is, what the events happened, in what order. Whereas in Breath of the Wild, you can get them out of order, and they're all individual things, and then by the end of it, you piece it all together, and it's like, well, cool, but that doesn't really tell me anything that I didn't know already. It just gives you extra character development, pretty yeah. much. It's not like it's revealing some big crazy thing about the calamity that we didn't know before. It's just you True. see these little vignette moments. Whereas in this, it feels more like it's informing what you're doing in the present mm-hmm. to me. Which is why I like that you can find it in different spots out of order. But I could also see why yeah. that would be frustrating to see one I, of the last things. And I don't know. Like, oh, I just, cool. I've watched a lot of people play through this game and like on twitch and youtube and people will watch a memory and be like wait i thought sonya was dead i'm confused i don't get i don't understand what's going on and it's like i get it but not everybody to to me a little bit well yeah because like they because you're supposed to know those are in the past well no i know but then (laughs) like you get you get them your your second memory is sonya getting killed and then you watch another memory and they're all talking and having tea together. It's like, okay, so this was before that. What's... That process that you're going through right now, I actually love. See, I, got I, the next I one, like, I'm like putting... Wait, so this happened before that. I like so that, that means but that... I just don't love that so many things, like they aren't impactful because it's like, it's it, it, there's no lead up. It's just like, oh, here's can, a memory of Sonya getting that. killed. Cool. I can empathize with that. Like, I don't. I don't. I, I, I haven't met way, this person I, I yet. I saw that. one memory with this person, and then I watched her get killed. What? Yeah. I don't understand what's going on. And I don't know. It's just like that death could have been way cooler mm-hmm. and maybe a little bit more impactful if I had seen at least maybe one more memory with her first. But I don't know. I know. I love the story. I just wish maybe each location maybe, you could go and you find it and it doesn't have to be a picture of a geoglyph or whatever. And it's just mm-hmm. like you find that memory and it automatically gives you memory two and you go to another location, no matter where it is, it automatically gives you memory three. Like that would have it been, could have been cool if they even just like maybe certain memories like that or the big, the big well, ones. They do it with, with the final memories, but that's it. Well, you could even just have like those big important ones. Like you can't get them until the late game for whatever reason. Yeah. Like they're just locked behind whatever. I don't know. But I've just seen a lot of people say they don't like the story of this game. And every single person I've seen say that was because they got things in out of order. I think the issue with that, though, is that the memories aren't the entire story of the game. They're like, oh, no, I fully I fully agree. Yeah. And. And I I think it's not to me like I to I I don't know who the people who felt that way are and it's personally like it's not even one of my favorite stories it's I think it's really good though 
But like, I feel like if you didn't get it, like it's it's not it's not up to the game to make it so other people get it. You know, like mm. like if you experienced it, Nico, and it like touched you and it like emotionally affected you, then mm. it's a success. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think actually the way it was like how it was like that mm-hmm. for me made it more interesting. Like to me, the actual story of the game yeah. Like that was like a part of the story, which was, mm-hmm. but the actual story was me discovering those memories as opposed to like just yes. what is contained within, you know? And then mm-hmm. on top of that, all the other things that happen in the game, you know, like the memories were almost like for me, not the story I was moving through in the game, but they were like set, like setting the table <laughs> of the rest of oh, the totally. game of the overall world, you know? Well, so that's a thing too that is a big difference between the memories in this and the memories in Breath of the Wild is that in this when you start to learn stuff you actually go and tell people you go and tell Pura mm-hmm. and you have a little powwow and they decide based on this information that we learned from that now mm-hmm. we can go do this Zelda draconified herself with the master sword now we know the master swords over there there was yeah. this all this stuff with the ancient sages well, wait a minute, there's got to be one more sage. And it's like, there is, if I'm not mistaken, there's literally zero of that in Breath of the Wild. It's not like you learn something in Breath of the Wild yeah, and then you have to go is. do something in the present. It's just, oh, that happened in the past and either it gives you additional juicy lore and character <laughs> development or it didn't. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this, it's like you're you're actually learning some stuff and it's actually informing some of your actions in the present it's affecting the plot in the here and now you know yeah i mean every every memory has like a story beat that is important and i Mm -hmm. agree with that i just i hate how many people i've seen say they don't like the game because of the story and that the story haters ruined itself (laughs) (laughs) you heard it here first well i have i have way too much to say about this for a a bite-sized video um but Spitfire. I, as we're no, I'm not going to say as guys. we're as we're talking about this and I'm thinking about like story linearity. Um, we just watched The Haunting of Hill House uh, mine for, I think, maybe the third or fourth time, which is a story that's told completely non linearly. It's got mm-hmm. lots of it's got flashbacks. It's got present. It's got lots of little clips that are told completely out of order. The, the show starts with the death of um, an important character and then the rest of the show is like leading up to that mm-hmm. and uh, this is this is not a, a comment on on uh, you know quality of story because I think one story is uh, quite a lot better <laughs> crafted than the other but um, just just seeing stories told in a non-linear way especially when they're they're crafted, to be more of a, a mystery um i think is good and i think um this is my big english major opinion that if a story is ruined by a spoiler it's not a good story i would agree with that i, sort of agree. I somewhat agree Ooh. with that for the most part there is something to be said about like experience i'm not saying that like, it, doesn't, it yeah. doesn't feel good to like get this shocking mm-hmm. thing happened but like uh revealed but yeah that that shouldn't I, be like the big thing that your story is based around my my overall take take away from it was it goes back to when i like i realized early on what was going to happen to zelda because in like the second memory i saw they're like uh, the only way to re- do yeah. the thing you want to do is to turn into a dragon. I'm like, okay, she's going to turn into a dragon. And then she did. And I was like, that's, that was wild. Yeah. But yeah. then I realized that wasn't actually like, it wasn't like just leading up to that. It was to set the table for later. Yeah. When for Ganondorf, Ganondorf does it. Yeah. And like the moment I realized he was going to do that, I was like, Oh, and yeah. then they had a big dragon battle. And I was like, that was awesome. So yeah. like, um, and it also hinted to you where to go get the master sword. Once you stopped true. watching that memory, you know, it's almost like they took like back in the day, you'd read the backstory to Zelda games and then you just go play. Well, it's almost like they took 
the backstory, put it in the game. You know, like in Zelda 2, you're reading about the sleeping uh, Zelda and the prince or whatever, and you're like, okay, cool. Well, in this, you're like seeing, you're getting a glimpse into like the backstory almost, and it becomes like its own story within the game. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes it kind of special in in a a weird way. And it's sort of like in Tunic, where you're just like finding bits and stuff, and you got to kind of... yeah. It's a little different because it's more story based than mechanics, but there is some story stuff in that. So, Nico, I'm sti- I'm sticking up for it. It's not even one of my favorite stories, but I'm a, I'm I'm on team. We got to defend it. Don't <laughs> see the ground a- to it, <laughs> those haters I, out there. I love it, and I just wish everybody else could have experienced it the way I did. And I'm just sad that some people don't like it. Let's just go send them to because of that. Tears of the Kingdom, all cut Actually, scenes. You know what we need to send them <laughs> yeah, to? Just watch we it. need just to send them to literary to school, apparently. Is yeah. <laughs> what we need to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about like what if what we're having a separate conversation. Like, is this a good story or was the narrative yeah. plot structure good? Like, if you yeah. don't like the way it was presented, that's a whole different thing than yeah. saying you don't like the events that happened, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like the movie. It's like Memento. It's like another movie where it's like told in a crazy Mm -hmm. way. You watch events forwards and backwards and it's going different ways in the structure of the events. And Mm -hmm. it's like if some people could not like that movie because they're like, that was confusing. It made no sense to me. I didn't like it because it was all chopped up like that. But like the events that happened from from Mm -hmm. the beginning to the end. If you liked that, then you liked the story. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, I know. Like, like one of my favorite fiction. TV shows is uh, yeah. Over the Garden Wall, and the first episode of Over the Garden Wall got moved to be the second to last episode um, oh. because they wanted the most of the show to just be this strange, like, who are these kids? What are they doing? Lost in this weird place and then (laughs) only in the second to last episode do you find out that they were just like they got lost on halloween night and you think that they're just like these weird people living in a weird world but they're just like normal kids that got lost and you have no idea until the second to last episode and they just fully decided to change the narrative and it changes the entire show um that's awesome viewing it that way so i don't know I, i think it's i think it's smart to tell stories and in different ways and i wish everybody understood that my biggest miss is that <laughs> nintendo nintendo didn't tell people to go to literary school before playing tears of the kingdom that is my biggest miss on this game oh, well. this ended up being like a really, a really long a nice conversation honestly we were gonna yeah. have a bite-sized episode dear viewers <laughs>